I propose to tell the story of Krishna avatar in three parts. The story is told by Rishi Sukhdev to Raja Parikshit sitting under a kadamba tree, a tree which was dear to Bhagavan Krishna. Once upon a time, a number of kings behaved as if they owned the earth, says Sukhadev. Actually, they were daityas born as human beings in princely families, hard pressed by their sins and misdeeds. Prithvi approached Brahma in the form of a cow for relief. I have included paintings to illustrate this story. Prithvi was not at peace with herself. Her body had shriveled. She was shedding copious tears and moving pathetically. Listening to Prithvi's tale of woes, Brahma, accompanied by Shiva and other devatas, approached Vishnu, who was resting in Kshir Sagar on Seshana. While praying to Vishnu, Brahma was lost in contemplation. He had a vision in which Vishnu assured him that he was aware of Prithvi's woes and would soon be born as a son to Devaki and Vasudev, who lived in Mathura. He promised to destroy the Rakshasas loitering in the garb of kings of evil disposition. Brahma was also asked to advise the Devatas to take birth in Brajabhumi, in the cowherd families, in as large numbers as they could, to be Vishnu's companions and helpmates. The Devanganas would take birth as girls to be companions to the beloved of the God. The story continues. We are back to earth. A courtier by the name Shur Sen lived near Mathura at that time. He belonged to the Yadu dynasty. His son Vasudev married Devaki, daughter of Devaka, a nearby king. Devaka saw off his beloved daughter with pomp and show befitting his status. She was accompanied by elephants garlanded with necklaces of gold, sturdy white and brown steeds, and super fast chariots. She was gifted gold ornaments and silken saris for her use. A number of maids accompanied her to look after her comforts. After the marriage ceremony, the bridal couple ascended a chariot draped in flowers and multicolored buntings. Devuki's cousin Kansa, son of Ugrasen, the king of Mathura, in order to show affection and to honor his beloved sister and her husband, took the reins of the chariot to drive them to Mathura. It was an atmosphere of celebration and gaiety. Bands were playing auspicious music on conches, torhi, mridang and dundubi. Bards were singing songs to bless and wish the new couple a long, happy, fruitful and prosperous married life. All of a sudden the heavens thundered. A roaring voice addressed Kansa. You are a fool, you oh prince, you are showering affection on a cousin whose eighth child will kill you. Beware. That was a catastrophic warning. By temperament, Kansa was a scoundrel, a blot on the Bhoj dynasty. He was cruel and shameless. His act of magnanimity at being a charioteer for Vasudev and Devaki was mere pretense. He only wanted to show off his affection for his cousin to the whole world. Rishi Shukadev continues, when Kansa heard this dire prophecy, he drew his sword pulled Devaki by her hair and threatened to swear her head from her torso. There is a beautiful Pahadi paintings showing this and I have included it at this spot. With great presence of mind, Vasudev tried to dissuade Kansa. Brother, he said, you are an asset to the Bhoj dynasty. You will bring fame to them. You are renowned for chivalry and noble deeds. You ought not to kill your sister, firstly because she is a woman, secondly because she is your sister. 
and thirdly because this is the auspicious occasion of her marriage moreover the prophecy talks of her eighth child causing harm to you that's a long time away oh noble warrior pleaded vasudev acknowledged as such by the bravest of the land death is certain for anyone who is born that is an immutable law of nature anyone who breathes will die tomorrow or after a hundred years but die he will to escape from death look at the reflection of the sun the moon or the stars in a tub full of water or oil when the wind blows over the surface of the water or oil the image shakes it does not mean that the sun or the moon or the stars are shaking likewise the human beings get attached to this body and rejoice at its arrival or mourn its death it is sheer ignorance a human being neither comes nor goes his soul is immortal therefore argued vasudev one should not bear malice towards any one nor plan his or his her destruction if you harm any one you create an enemy who will harm you in this life kansa devuki is your younger sister she is tender you have frightened her she is like your daughter she has been married she is still dressed in finery her mehndi has not dried the sindoor in the parting of her hair is still fresh it does not behove a kind and generous man like you to kill her however vasudeva's arguments and flattery cut no ice with kans his sword was still raised to devuki's head you can see it in the painting vasudev tried another trick why not postpone the heinous deed by buying time who knew what tomorrow had in store either for kans or for devuki the angry prince might not live that long he might die in battle at the hands of an enemy a forest fire burnt at random who could surmise the role of destiny correctly thought vasudev there is always an unknown to reckon with vasudev smiled affably and looked at kans whose face was distorted with anger and said listen to me my brother it is not that you are afraid of devuki you are afraid of her sons and that to the eighth one i give you my word of honor that i shall bring each one to you as soon as he is born and then you can decide his fate listening to vasudeva's pleading says sukhdev kansa relented he was sure of his brother in law's promise after all devuki was his younger cousin why hurt her beyond what was absolutely necessary he thought he spared her life and drove them to their palace in mathura as soon as the first one was born vasudeva dutifully carried him to kansa the latter smiled and said i am pleased with your honesty my brother in law the prophecy mentioned your eighth child and not others please take my little nephew to his mother let her nurse him with tender care i shall wait for the eighth child destiny however will otherwise devarshi narad visited kans at a later date in order to turn kans into a real villain the devarshi advised him you are being stupid listen carefully the entire brajbhumi has been populated by devatas and devangaras and their progeny under orders of vishnu who is your enemy one day he will arrive that will be your end what is the way out asked kans account for all the children of vasudev and devuki nobody can see through the maya of bhagwan vishnu kans moved fast he arrested vasudev and devuki and put them behind bars he dethroned the king and usurped the throne of mathura he even put his father ugrasen into jail for the latter disapproved of his evil deeds as each son was born to vasudev and devuki he was carried to kansa the latter destroyed six such infants by throwing them against a rock simultaneously he started an ethnic cleansing of the yadu vansis more later namo bhagavate vasudevaya namo bhagavate 
वासुदेवाय जय श्री कृष्ण जय श्री कृष्ण जय श्री कृष्ण